Hey folks, uh, welcome to the Shoemakers Academy. Hey, it's uh, Wade the Shoe Dog. Um, yeah, it's been a little while since we made videos. And um, I mean, you've seen some short videos that we've had on Instagram and on YouTube. And those are all from this trip we took to, to China in November. And I know it, it's been about a month, but uh, uh, we've been really busy with things like, you know, Christmas and uh, a lot of client work. So, but uh, after showing you all those short videos, I wanted to take a little bit more time and to show you a factory, the name of this factory is called Genova. And this factory is located in South China, um, about an hour's drive or an hour and a half from the airport in Hong Kong. If you take that new bridge and tunnel that goes uh, underneath the Pearl River, you can get there or, uh, or you can take the ferry boat. Um, uh, so this factory has been around for about five or six years. Um, it's a four line factory. So what, is, what does that mean? That means they can make maybe 5,000 pairs a day if they're running full tilt with four lines or a little bit more than that. And this factory, and the, actually this picture here, these these gentlemen here, the, the guy in the end here, this is Gary, who actually is on our team. Uh, Tony is, is the boss of this. Uh, you know that guy, that's me. And this is Robin, who also is a partner in this factory. So uh, these are the gentlemen that, that tours around. Um, if, if, if you find yourself working in this factory, Gary from our team basically is your product manager and Tony and Robin, actually, this is their factory. So, um, this is their jam. So, um, Genova, uh, so these gentlemen are Taiwanese, um, this factory, um, and in the, and most of the workers and the, and the managers from this factory used to work for another Taiwanese company called Pao Chen. Pao Chen is a giant, they're a mega factory many factories you know hundreds of assembly lines in in all different countries and and basically pao chen had a large factory in this area um and i don't know 10 years ago they closed it so all the staff members and when you look at the photos and videos you're going to see some workers here with gray hair which is a little bit uncommon um because usually they're young people but these folks are all sort of highly skilled worked at that mega factory when the mega factory left town uh these people basically are local so they stayed and this is where they work so the good news is is that we we have a really highly trained experienced stable workforce uh for for a smaller factory like this that's 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 gold right um the other thing is this factory um part of the reason i'm showing it to you is because this is a great opportunity for for small brands to get into whether you're a an american brand or a european brand um they're about half full right now. And why that is, is because these guys um, were doing a huge business for a really large American uh, footwear uh, um, brand that had many brands and those production all went to Vietnam and Indonesia. So this factory is incredibly well equipped, uh, well equipped to make sport shoes, but also work boots, hiking boots, hunting boots. Um, they have a full, testing lab they made steel toe they also have a desma injection machine so if you if you're curious about what that is it's the type of machine where the outsole is injected right onto the upper pretty pretty high-end pretty expensive specialized piece of equipment but if you're going to make uh, work boots or service boots that's exactly the kind of equipment you have so they have one of those and it, it's waiting because <laughs> they don't have customers for it right now but i'll show you some pictures later of of uh, of what some of that the kind of products they can make so we'll we'll turn off these guys and uh yeah, yeah this is me um we're gonna go through this factory you know the sound quality from our original recording is not very good and this is kind of loud so i'm gonna do the voiceover and you won't have to listen to the clank uh, clanking and banging but i would i did want to show you that actually yeah that's me in the in the in the factory i know i look a little haggard i just gotten off the uh, airplane uh, after flying overnight so um but uh, let's let's take a look at what's going on here. Um, and uh, okay, so at the end of the assembly line here, the front end, you're gonna basically work to match up the uppers with the lasts. And and, and the, what they're making here right now is a local market Chinese. And uh, these brand these kind of brand is really hyped up uh, on TikTok, I guess is the is the thing. So kind of wild design. So. What, this is a strobel, right? So you see that solid fabric bottom and they're steaming the upper. You can see the steam shooting out and then he's using that big old shoehorn to get the upper onto the onto the last. 
And uh, now they're going to basically sort of lace it up, get the tongues in place, and make sure nothing's getting crooked. And, and what that gal's doing with that paper gauge is she's marking the, the rear end of the outsole height so they can get the outsole marked correctly. And that little machine with a roller, here, I'll pause it a second. That machine with a roller is a little steamer. And if there's something that's a little bit wrinkled when they're putting it onto the last, they can use that steam and that pressure roller to, to roll out the wrinkles. Pretty nice trick. Um, so what this gal is doing, she is using a heel laster. And what the heel laster does is it grabs the last, pushes it, and the other thing kind of grabs the upper and pulls it down. And that just makes sure that the upper strobel is fully in contact with the bottom of the last. Make sure it's all the way seated down. So you can see it, it pushes and then it sort of has that metal thing that sort of smears and grips it. Uh, and that's actually a heat tunnel. And... Now you can see it's just going down the conveyor belt. And the next station is they're doing what's called outsole marking. And you can see they have this pen and the pen is actually using a UV ink. So it's invisible to the eye. When you see that sort of purple glow, that actually is the, um, that's the UV light that they're using so they can see the work that they're doing. So you can see she's drawing the line. Uh, that other gal, she is checking to make sure that everything's marked. And then here, this actually, um, this interesting machine, this is actually a heat tunnel, right? It just goes up or around inside in a carousel. So instead of a, instead of a, a, a linear tunnel, it goes up inside. And, and why is that? It's, it's a space saver. And if you look at this assembly line, it's actually U-shaped. Instead of a big, long, like 100-yard assembly line, this machine, this assembly line basically makes a turn. So this is the actually the end of the first leg. and uh, you can see after she's she's actually looking she's got the uv light you can see and what she's going to do is hold up the unit she's going to add primer to the to the upper and it's go into this little conveyor oven and then they're going to put it on racks and then behind her actually is the other is the other leg of the assembly line so we'll see that next so you can see she's uh she's following the the line you can see just that little uv line right and that's cool because then it's not the upper is not marked so they can still do their process you can see it right there right you can see get that over there you can see that that glowing line but in the when the, in daylight you don't see that so and then she's <clears throat> you can see that primer you see how dark the leather got right there where she touched it because that it's saturating into the leather and basically now it comes out of that and then you can see all the uppers are stacked and they're going to go basically across the room, you know, not very far, just around behind. And here they're going to be mated up with, with the outsoles. So what are those? Okay, so question, what are those you know, those shoes doing that look like they already have the outsoles on? They, those maybe are getting a little rework, like there was a scuff or some dirt or some other component that needs to be glued on. Um, actually, you can see there's this little, this little um, funny looking rear piece. This actually maybe the, I think... This is a special feature of that shoe. So it's probably come back to the end of the assembly line so they can add that feature onto the back of it. This crazy, weird Chinese design, who knows? Okay, so what they're doing here is they, you can see the outsoles are up on top and the, and the uppers are on the bottom and they are gonna add primer and cement to each of the pieces. So yeah, this is a weird sort of cat shape thing going on there. Okay, so the next station, you can see, look at what they have here. They have the UV light, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> excuse me they have the uv light which shows them where to apply the glue or the primer now in this case it looks like another coat of primer you can see how it's saturating the um the upper there so that's more more likely primer and also on the other side they're going to be priming the, the the outsoles now they've gone through the heat tunnel and that evaporates uh, that evaporates any solvent and in this case it's actually water because this is water-based um you can't you can't smell it obviously but when you're in the factory like i was you can really smell whether it's solvent based or if it's water based in this factory is now because they make for export it's now they're all using water based okay so they're they're putting glue on the on the on the upper and on the outsole now that little this is a kind of interesting glue machine some some of these things are sort of they have a little hand trigger that dispenses glue or they have a foot pedal or you can see they have a little glue bowl there <laughs> That's a little bit old fashioned to have the glue sitting there. I don't know why. It's, I don't know why it's there because that, that you can see that tube leads to an airline or a pump. Okay, so here we are. 
we are mounting the outsoles to the upper. So they they grab the outsole off the top and the upper off the bottom. And and what is he doing with that sort of spudger tool? What he's doing is he's making sure that once he's got the bottom all the way contacted, he's making sure that there's no gaps between the the upper and the outsole. So he just runs that runs that knife along to make sure that he's getting full contact all the way around just to make sure there's no gaps and to make sure that the whole upper is seated all the way down. Now, they're gonna use a hydraulic press. This is the next operation to make sure it's down. Now here, they're adding a little glue. Now this, uh, this shoe design, you can see the upper sort of hangs off over the outsole, pretty weird. But hey, what are the kids using these days? So now if they've, they've, they've gone through a heat tunnel and they're gonna get a pressing operation. So here's what this worker's doing. Uh, actually, in the back here, let me, let's back up here a second. <clears throat> There's two kinds of presses here. So this is a standard hydraulic press that pushes on the top of the last and on the sides. And in the back here, um, this is a this is kind of a bladder press. And basically, open up those those doors. They pivot aside. You put the shoe down inside, and there's a there's a rubber bladder that just grabs the shoe and just pulls really squeezes it together. Um, you know, <laughs> I think in this case they're doing that because it has that unique upper design that if you, you were using the standard hydraulic press, it, it might damage the upper. So good reason why you, you'd use that sort of um, that bladder press. And then this machine again, is just another, it's an oven, right? Okay, so now the shoes are out, they're gonna de-last them. So all he does is, you know, he just looses the laces and uh, they're not using a machine, they're just using a post in this shoe. Pretty easy, just pulling it off. Ah, notice the other thing. What is he doing? He's taking those lasts and putting them on a rack organized by size. So therefore, they don't turn into a disorganized mess because those lasts are just going to get rolled over to the other side of the room to put into the next pair of shoes. Okay, now, now that the last is out, they can go ahead and do some channel stitching and you'll see how, how fast this guy goes. Um, now, here's here's another interesting thing you'll notice is that there's more than one design on the assembly line at once. Now, usually you don't see this. However, um, this factory is kind of hustling, right? They are making smaller runs with different colors and different styles just, just to keep, keep the doors open. But also these workers are so experienced and know what they're doing that they can handle several different shoes at once, right? Usually, you know, if, if your workers are not as skilled, you're going to just get one shoe to make and you're going to make that shoe all day long for, for weeks on end, right? In this case, you can see that they're just making a few different styles at once. Now, something that's going on here. You see this wooden, this wooden um, slab on top of the assembly line. What is that? This is called a quality bridge. And what this, what this means and what this ensures is that these inspectors, right? You can see they have the little uh, sticker sheet here with the little red arrows, right? Because they have to pick up the shoe and and carry it over the bridge, that means some worker did look at it. it, it you know, because if, if the assembly line just goes past, if they get busy, then maybe the shoe doesn't get looked at or doesn't get handled. So this is a great way for the factory manager to go to the QC people and say, hey, you know, how did this get past you? Because we know that one of you picked it up and, and picked it over, you know, had to pick it up and move it over the quality bridge. So this is a great way to ensure that it's getting inspected. And why do I have two people going? Because there's a lot of shoes coming down here. So you've got to you've got to look at every single one of them. So they're doing all the regular shoe inspection things, you know, looking at the, it's clean, it's symmetrical, it's all glued down correctly. All those things that we talk about in our in our inspection course, um, they're doing it. And then next you have all your labeling. So this um, <clears throat> You're gonna put your hang tags and you're gonna make sure you have a pair. Um, those, some of those look like maybe they're even sample tags. And what is that box? That box is a, um, is it could be a fungicide treatment. Okay, now here you can see, excuse me. Um, you can see all the different shoes they're making at once, right? So this big, you know, stacked up, there's lots of different models and colors and they're making a few hundred pairs of each. So yeah, it's, it's a real challenge for a factory like this to do that, but hey, you know, that's, that's how you make it work. Now, next, we're going to go upstairs. So here, these are these are parts. They've already been cut and they've put, been, been bagged up and they're going to be put together into basically sample kits. Not sample kits, but, but one pair of shoes, all the correct parts you need to assemble it. So just like if you were making a pair of shoes at home, you have to get all your pieces together. Well, they have to do it too. 
but they have to put together you know a few hundred at a time right so that's that's what that is and now here's what a stitching room looks like right um so in the back you can see they're cutting and here is a here's a um a post stitching machine and they, you can see all the pieces already have logos and stuff on them and uh and here she goes she is uh, actually putting together a tongue it looks like tongue face and tongue lining and here you can see the baskets right so this basket has all the stuff you need to make to make the assembly right so here she's putting together some lining components maybe back tabs adding on and you can see the super tough reinforcing inside there all you know so you can see hey people say are these shoes handmade yeah every single one of them right and this is how exactly you know this is kind of a wild you know chinese local market shoe but your nikes your adidas they're all made the same way you know humans grabbing pieces and sewing it together so here you can see all the pieces are together in the little basket and each worker is doing their specific set of operation now the workers do you know operate you know instead of giving one worker all the parts and having them put it together each worker does several operations and then they pass it to the next worker and this ensures that they get really good at it instead of you know instead of making a mistake okay so this is actually a hot glue machine and you can see it's spraying a little glue and then she's adding the heel counter um, you can see the I stay reinforcing is in there and then she's going to roll over the she's going to roll over the lining so here's the collar foam same thing just glues it on there now this this glue um it's it's hot glue so just like a glue stick gun right only it sprays it out but it's it's sort of a fine swirl of it so it's not so clumpy um it won't penetrate the material and the the cool thing about it is and the cool thing the interesting thing about hot glue is when you take it downstairs to the assembly area and it gets into the heat tunnel it softens and let those parts basically conform and make a really nice shape so it used to be you sort of glue it together with like elmer's glue and it would be a little stiff and a little crusty and maybe it'd saturate but this kind of hot glue conforms and makes a really nice well-formed shoe so as you can see, they're going down. They've they've put together the lining. Now she's added the color foam, and now they've turned the lining out. And this shoe is about ready to close, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to put the vamp on, and those are some vamp parts. So they're punching the the I stay holes here. Sorry, a little fast camera work here. Now this gal is actually closing the tongue, right? And she's I don't know if she has the binder on that machine. Oh yeah, so. Um, you can see these machines so actually it's not a binding machine okay now this is the closing operation so you can see the vamp is already on attached to the side panels and she's wrapping it around and this is actually where the flat pieces wrap into 3d so this is this is the closing operation you got to make sure you got the pieces just in the right place and uh <clears throat> you got to be really careful about this because these stitches are going to go all the way through the shoe so you have to make sure that they're they're well aligned and they do it they do a careful job of it so that's the closing operation okay so that is um that is the stitching department now i'm going to show you some we're going to go over here and uh, i'm going to show you some more photos from inside the factory here if i can find my uh my uh photo app here let's pause for a second all right so uh this is some of those operations we saw in the uh, in the video but so here you can see she's she's using a post machine to sew the lining to, to the tongue face together and let's let's speed up one over here so these are you can see they've got they're using a little liquid glue here and that's okay because they're gonna either attach this looks like this looks like it could be a piece of the vamp or the or the back collar uh and actually here you can see the toe reinforcing is now okay so actually that that is the toe tip and here we have the thermal plastic sheet has already been glued on to the very front of the toe tip all right so not the vamp on top but around the perimeter so this is all this is all glued together and um let's see here that's the rivet punching machine and the linings turned out and you can see the tongue and the vamp assembly here and this is where you, now you've got those two parts together where you can attach you know on the mud guard you can attach those two pieces together and make the complete shoe and uh and then uh we have a video let me see if, oh yeah you can see this is the heel forming machine let's run this video okay, this is the heel 
So what, actually, whoops, what we're looking at there, let me get there, let's get that video going again here. What you're looking here, that is basically the back half of the last, and it's been, it's been cut off, and, and there's a heater on one side, and that piece actually is chilled. It's, 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 sometimes you see a little frost on it. And what that's doing is, <laughs> it's heating the, it's heating the heel counter plastic, now, it's not liquefying it, but it's making it nice and soft and conformable. And then when you put it onto the forming machine, it basically is cold and locks the shape. So let's let's just fast forward to that. So here the machine is coming down and it is clamping it and cooling it to set the shape. That way you can get a beautiful, well-formed heel counter. And uh, it's even though you're starting with a flat sheet of plastic, you can still get this great shape. Now, some factories will use injection molded uh, instead of uh, instead of a sheet cut good. In the end, if you handle it properly, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see. You all know what a cutting die looks like, so here's some more cutting dies. And uh, of course, you got to have it all arranged. Here's the cutting operation. Now, you'll notice um, they're just cutting foam, and so you can stack up four or five layers at once. It's not a it's not a problem. Um, okay, more cutting dies. And actually, let's let's. I told you that this factory was pretty well kitted out. Let's let's go over to the sample room. This is very typical what a sample room looks like. You see lots of shoe materials aside there. And in the top stitchers from the production area will find their way to get a job in the sample room because it's important that they work quickly and accurately to make the nice looking samples. Um, there's the crew there. Um, but let's, I want to tour you over to the, um, let's get back to, uh, Let's see here. Hold on. I want to show you. Okay. So this is the kind of products, you know, that they can make. So these were made for uh, Timberland, right? And you can see safety toe, winter boots, service boots. So they have all the equipment to make this really sturdy kind of shoe. But in, in the meantime, while they're waiting for that business, they're doing sort of this crazy, you know, yoed out local market stuff. Um, but here, let's just, I'll just show you, um, so you can see they're doing tons of different colors and styles and, uh, just trying to, just trying to keep, trying to keep it going. Um, all right. So when I'm looking at a, at a factory like this, of course you want to see what, what they have made, what brands they're making. You say, oh yeah, you look at this and you go. All right, they've made for some really outstanding brands. So, okay, we know that that if they've made for those big brands, that their quality standards are quite high. So, good. Next is you want to go to their testing equipment. Now, if you're going to make that kind of that kind of uh, hiking, hunting, or service boots, you're going to need some quite specialized equipment. So, we'll just I have a quick video inside their uh, inside their testing line. We'll just watch this for a second. So oil content, meaning when you get a piece of leather, you want to make sure that it has the correct amount of oil to make it waterproof. But you'll often see they say flexes or maser flexes or whatever. And that is, that's the machine. So basically you, you can see there's a watermark inside that tank. So that tank is about half full of water. And they put the boot in and they put an electrode underneath the footbed and it's a water sensing device. And as the shoe flexes, it might go overnight, it might take hundreds or it should go 5,000, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And then when water, if, if and when water penetrates, it turns off the machine. And then, and I, this is the job I had, was once you see that shoe has, has opened, uh, or as, you know, whatever water's got in, you take the shoe and you dry it off. And because you used colored water, you can see where the water penetrated. Did it go through the sole? Did it get through a seam? Um, was the waterproof membrane sealed correctly? So you can see exactly how much and where the water got in, got into the boot. Now let's, there's some other equipment here. Um, there's abrasion testers. And you can see, look at this, look at this lab. They've got everything, right? Um, they've got dry flex test. They got wet flex test. 
and they've got abrasion testers, right? Because if you're trying to make really durable shoes, then you need to make sure that, I mean, this drum here literally is a piece of sandpaper that grinds through the, that grinds through the leather or the mesh or the rubber and tells you its wearability. Um, for, for any kind of boot with metal hardware, you're going to want to pull the hardware to make sure that when your big construction worker goes to put his shoelaces on, he doesn't tear the eyelets off, right? So you've got to, you've got to test that. A uh, similar thing. And now this ramp actually is for a traction tester, right? So you put the product on that ramp and it just, and there's a way to, there's some other fixturing that shows you what it takes to drag that thing to make sure that it's not slipping, right? Okay. So, uh, uh, in conclusion, um, Genova is a really nice looking factory. Um, they really make some some really nice looking shoes. They have fantastic capability. They have really experienced workers. Um, like I said, they're about half full. Oh, you know what? I forgot. There's some there's some other things. Let me. We're gonna go downstairs to the to the ground floor of the factory, and I just want to show you a quick video. Now this uh, this is our friend Gary, and um, and this ground floor actually you can see in the back behind him. There's a whole other assembly line that's not being used and there's a big square of empty space. That's where their Desma machine, when they're operating it, is. And right now it's in storage, but they could easily haul it out and turn it on. So, but what we're going to look at here is a new piece of equipment they have that is a is an automated cementing line. So we'll should get one because this one's really good. Okay, this is where the uppers are steamed and they go into, uh, this is still another heating machine, right? Okay, still another heating machine. And then this is where the the last and the uppers are combined. And this machine reads it has a barcode scanner and it automatically it automatically sprays on the upper and on the outsole. It goes around the carousel and it comes back to this workstation where it gets assembled. And they pass it to another worker for the pressing station and then another worker for the cooling station. And then around the corner is the packing station. So all that stuff we saw upstairs in 100 yards with 100 people is done by 14 people right here in this compact little unit. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this automated process work. And actually, this this um this picture right here is what is what that unit uses. So the last instead of just handled by hand by workers, it's handled on the machine. Therefore, it has this this metal this metal plate attached to it. And so, uh, like I explained, once the upper is on the last like that, uh, the computer reads the, reads the barcode that tells it what model and what size it automatically applies the glue. And then also uh, automatically applies glue to the outsole unit by using optical sensor and other crazy stuff. And then we still have to have humans to press it together. But instead of all those workers we saw where they were applying the primer and the cement, that's all done inside the machine. So, so even though, yeah, this factory has a lot of labor in this area, it's actually where this factory is located. They have no shortage of, of experienced workers to make shoes. They are still investing in this sort of fancy new equipment. Um, so here's the boss, Tony. And um, again, this is, a, this is a, a, a great little factory. If you want to learn more about it, then uh, please contact me, the shoe dog at Shoemakers Academy. Um, there's a link down below in the description and, uh, you know, if, if we can find out if this factory is right for you. Like I said, um, if you're an American brand or you're a Europe, European brand, no problem to use a factory in South China. Again, if you're, uh, if you're trying to get started, then this may be a good choice for you. Um, this is one of those things where depending, depending on your project, what it is you're making, like if you want sandals, this is not the right factory for you, but if you want to make waterproof or sport shoes, high end running or athletic, that Genova is a pretty nice factory for you, and we can uh, we can introduce you to Gary, and uh, and we can get your project in here, and we'll take a look. So, anyways, thanks for watching, folks. I know it's a bit of a long video, but like I said, I really wanted to show you uh, Genova because this is a this is a factory that's um that's basically really nice guys, really experienced and uh, ready to do business, and and I've been there with my own eyes and seen what they do. So, um, they're actually a pretty nice outfit.